Welcome back to Nature League. It's the second week of the month and that means it is time for a field trip. And this month we've been talking about rhythms and cycles and how we observe those and what affects them uh, in life on Earth and the species we see. So we are lucky to be joined by Dr. Mark Reiser. I uh, work in the physics and astronomy department and geosciences. Uh, I'm an academic advisor and uh, outreach coordinator. Physics and astronomy and geosciences, uh, from the outside it might seem like how does that have anything to do with rhythms or, or species and animals, plants. But the fact of the matter is, a lot of the cycles we see uh, in life on Earth uh, occur because we are in space and things are moving. And it's not just us. There are all kinds of components that change and spin and tilt. And so I was hoping that you could uh, maybe go through some of these basic uh, processes and movements of things in space that have to do with us and what happens on Earth. The moon in our sky, obviously, the, as a source of light, but then the gravitational interactions, um, that cycle is roughly a 29 and a half day uh, cycle between um, new moon, successive new moons and or successive full moons, however you want to uh, measure that. So with the lunar cycle right now, it's about 29 and a half days from one, so we'll say a new moon to another yeah. new moon or a full moon to another full exactly. moon. Um, but is that something that's just constant and has always been that way or is it something that's changing? The interactions between the Earth and the moon are very strong and, and what actually happens is the Earth is actually being slowed ever so slightly in its rotation um, by kind of the gravitational drag induced by the moon. Uh, and as that happens, the moon actually drifts a little bit farther away from the Earth, and the period uh, between new moons is actually slowly going up as the moon gets a little farther away. A uh, very slow process and a very gradual effect. It's something on the order uh, of around a centimeter or two a year that is drifting away. We've actually confirmed and measured this with the cool. mirrors left behind on the, on the moon by the Apollo astronauts. We can measure uh, that, huh. that distance uh, to great precision. If we still call a month a month and want to base it off of the moon, we will have to somewhat increase that. Right. Yeah, they'll be longer than 29 and a half days in the, in the future. When I think about the way that uh, life on Earth is affected and has um, kind of environmental cues, mm -hmm. so much of that has to do with light and something sure. like photo periods, so light periods, so how much light there is and when, mm -hmm. and that changes throughout the year and changes throughout even the day. And sure. so the biggest things that Earth and the sun do? What's kind of happening in space? What makes a season happen? The primary mover, or the primary driver, I should say, in, in the seasons is, is the, the orientation of our uh, axial tilt relative to the sun in, in whichever hemisphere you're, you're living in at that time. For more or less half the year, um, people in the northern hemisphere are more uh, tilted, to that side of the globe is essentially more favored in terms of its tilt towards the sun. And that essentially leads to a couple factors then from there are basically how direct um, the sun's rays are, so ultimately how intense the sunlight is on the ground, and then how many hours of time actually go by before you get your sunset once the sun rises. So you get longer days in those months when the, your hemisphere is tilted towards the sun and you get more intense sunlight. I was also thinking about some longer term cycles that we might see sure. and, and how that affects some of the rhythms and, and energy on Earth and for things that live. And so the idea of, of solar cycles and these 11 year cycles, mm -hmm. I was wondering if you could kind of explain what those are. Yeah, on Earth, one kind of rudimentary way to, to analyze one of the cycles of the sun is just count sunspots. Just how many of these little darker blemishes do we see on the visible uh, surface of the sun or the photosphere? And we see them kind of ebb and flow in regular, pretty reliable 11-year intervals. You oscillate between high and low sunspot numbers within an 11-year time. And in that time, we notice a lot of really tangible uh, changes on, on Earth as far as um, in the sky. One obvious correlation with those sunspot numbers is the amount of auroral activity that we get in our skies. Uh, so if you get um, a lot more sunspots being visible on the surface, it tends to be correlated with solar storms and, and basically particles are, are basically ejected uh, from the, the sun's surface at a much much more readily. There are many more holes in the, uh, coro in the corona, basically where these particles can, can uh, escape from, and you get uh, a much greater frequency of cascades of particles uh, smashing into our atmosphere. One species that is dramatically impacted sometimes by these uh, solar uh, outbursts are, is, are, are going to be human beings. Um, whether it be satellites or radio communications, things of that nature, it can knock out cell communications for, huh. for good chunks of, of time and that's why we have to we want to be kind of aware of when these solar storms are, are happening so we monitor the sun for those. So during these increases of uh, of, of sunspot numbers, we, we are more vulnerable, I suppose, to those solar outbursts. And now, a word. 
Not from our sponsors, but from the dictionary. Welcome to this month's Wild Word. Once a month on Nature League, we'll look at the etymology or origin and history of words related to nature. This month's theme is rhythms, so we're going to break down one of the most important biological rhythms on Earth. This month's Wild Word is circadian. During our lesson plan, we discuss examples and mechanisms of circadian rhythms. We also touched on the time period of circadian rhythm cycles, which is about 24 hours. It just so happens that the etymology of this word is pretty dead on when it comes to the definition. The word circadian can actually be traced back to Latin, but it has two separate parts we should look at. The first part, circa or circa, is a Latin word meaning about or around, occasionally used for estimations. The second part of the word circadian contains the root dia, and this comes to us from the Latin word dies, meaning day. Circadian rhythms have periods of close to 24 hours across species, making them one of life's rare constants. However, the periodicity can change due to environmental variables, so these rhythms aren't exactly 24 hours on the dot. So while a formal definition of circadian Circadian is recurring naturally on a 24-hour cycle, even in the absence of light fluctuations. Circadian comes from two Latin words that literally mean about a day. And while that isn't very wild, it is beautifully appropriate. There is life on Earth represented in the mm -hmm. way that we look mm -hmm. at our cosmos, right? Yeah. And so I think about constellations. We've got bears, we've got rabbits, we've got a crab, we've got a bull, we've got half goat, half sea creature of some kind. We've got a whale in some Perfect. sort. You know, we had talked about Cetus, and then we've got a couple of dogs, we've got a wolf, a ram. Somewhere close to like half of all named or officially recognized mm -hmm. constellations actually are based on sure. species here. Yeah. To me, that shows us kind of how important we feel life on Earth is, even when we're looking at somewhere where we aren't, mm -hmm. you know, living necessarily, sure, but sure. still kind of put our print as we see these things in the sky. Absolutely. Earth is this ball of matter hurling through space and spinning and it's it's you can't unwed the two the fact that yeah. everything that is happening in space and in our galaxy affects us and everything else that lives yeah. here thank you so much for Absolutely. joining us and uh, thank you for watching this special uh, field trip We're talking about rhythms and cycles on earth and how that has to do with the way that things are moving and tilting and changing in space in our universe make sure to come back next week where we are going to break down a peer-reviewed journal in our segment called denatured and we will see you then thanks so much mm -hmm.